welcome to episode 72 of the This Old Knit podcast. I am your host, Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest. And you can find show notes on the Ravelry thread of the This Old Knit podcast. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to either PM me on Instagram or you can send me a Rav email. Those are the two best ways to get in contact with me. So, hi! It's been two weeks and I apologize for the hat, but it's really freaking cold in my house right now. So it is, I think, 63 degrees in the house and it's maybe 50 something outside. Um, so I'm really cold. I had a shawl on too, but Joshua didn't like my shawl. He told me to take it off and then I forgot to put it back on before I came up here. So um, I feel like this camera angle is a little bit high. So I'm going to pause and I will um, maybe move it down one. So give me one second. I don't know. Let's try that. <laughs> Courtesy of Agatha Christie from my teenage years. I brought you down one notch. I'll take you down a notch. Um, yeah, so I have um, one FO, one half object, and then just a bunch of various swoops to show. So thank you to all returning viewers for coming back. I appreciate you guys. And then um, welcome to any new viewers who are just joining me. I am going to take a sip of my coffee because, as I said, I'm freezing! And I also have a cup of hot water, which I need to throw my tea bag in there really quick. So I'm not wasting the warmth, which is going to go away. I'm not steeping something. Get in there, you! Okay. Um... So let me get into the knitting, and I have to figure out where I put everything, because I just threw things in bags and shoved and came upstairs. So I think it's maybe in here. Yes, it's in here. All right. So, um, one more administrative thing. Before I forget, uh, for anyone who was expecting a package from me, all the packages that I was supposed to send out have been sent. Um, I sent the swap package that I'm part of the Knitting Broomstick uh, Starbucks You Are Here mug swap. I sent that one out. I sent out the prize package to Harkness Angels, and I sent out the packages to Skyly Knits and Faith Chapel. Um, so those are all in the mail. If they haven't got to you already, they're coming. Just to let you know, it's all done. So the, the thing that I finished are my, um, shoot, Weasley Homestead socks. I knit these out of Volan Vine Yarns Footsie Base, the Chocolate Easter Bunny colorway, and then Knit Picks Hawthorne in the Turkish Delight colorway. So... They are. And I was going to record with my other camera, but the battery was dead. So I may switch partway through because I feel like it does a little bit better job of showing colors. For whatever reason, my phone really washes things out and the colors are not as vibrant as they otherwise would be. And my camera does not do that. So I prefer to... Um, record with my camera but for whatever reason I keep forgetting to charge the battery before I come to podcast and podcasting for me is very much a um, spontaneous act it's whenever the kids and husband decide that they're going to the gym on Saturday that's when I record because they're gone for about two hours so I usually record for the first hour and then I um, switch to doing a little bit of crafting. So here are the socks. God, they're getting so washed out. It's a beautiful color and I'm sad that it's not showing up as pretty as it is in person. Because it's showing up really orangey and it's not at all orangey. 
This is a pattern by Erica Luter. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Maybe if I hold them back here, it's a little better. The lighting's really weird. I did an Eye of Partridge heel. And just, <clears throat> excuse me, a rounded toe. Let's see if I'm maybe showing you this part. You can kind of see there's all these different fun little speckles of various colors. I think it's because I have the light coming from the side. I probably should have turned, but I need my desk for staging all of my items on. I did the 64 stitch version. And I really like this pattern, so I definitely will knit it again. I added it to my vanilla sock pattern notebook for going forward. And these are for the Box of Socks cow, which is in the Yarngasm podcast group. The Free All the House Elves cow, which is in the Yarn Hoarder podcast group. The um, Harry Potter year-long cow that KT of Inside Number 23 is hosting. And for my 13 Months of Magic cow entry from Vegan Jilly of Knitting Broomstick Podcast. So they were quadruple dipped socks. So I'm very happy that I was able to use them across so many different various contests. Of which I will probably not win any, but that's okay because I have a new pair of socks. So I'm a winner anyway. That's it. I think we've talked about those sufficiently, right? Right. Uh, so next thing, I forgot to take that sip of coffee. This morning I'm drinking out of my Canada mug. It has coffee all over it, sorry. This one was sent to me by the delightful Jessica. She's my Canada supplier. Someday we will meet in person. Someday it will happen. Okay, <clears throat> next one was a new cast on from last time that I podcast. So last weekend, my husband was talking about um, his socks and he's worn through, well, he's worn the heel of one of them kind of where it's uh, very thin. So he stopped wearing those until I can duplicate stitch over the heel. But we were talking about various different yarns that might be a little more sturdy and I think it was Amanda on the Yarn Hoarder podcast said for her husband she uses Corydale bases and they've held up really well and he's a runner so you'd get a lot of wear on the heel portion so I had some I think Rommeldale sock yarn in my stash is that the tag hang on a second Ramboulet. I had some Ramboulet in my stash and it feels pretty hardy as well so I thought maybe I would try that for um, heels and toes on his socks and I picked a yarn that matched it but then I realized that yarn was a sport weight yarn and this is a fingering weight so that kind of went out the window for right now. I do want to still use it. It's a gray color so it's the American brand yarn by Skacel and um, the color that I have is Great Smoky Mountains so this line was dyed all with uh, botanical dyes so I think this one does it say what it's dyed with it doesn't it doesn't say what it's dyed with I'm not even sure if I have this yarn up here to show you the yarn, so it's kind of silly that I'm showing you the tag, but as per the use, I have a long story before I show you the thing that I'm working on. So anyway, <laughs> um, that didn't work out, but I did have, if you'll recall, I had started a cuff for him at one point of these socks, and then I stole the needles to make socks for myself because I am a selfish knitter and I am perfectly happy about that. I don't mind at all because I do the work so why shouldn't I have the stuff? 
Um, so anyway, I was able to just slip that cuff back onto the needles and I finished knitting the cuff and then I knit the whole leg and up through the heel on Saturday of week before last. So they're fast. And then um, I knit the cuff on, or sorry, the heel on Sunday and then I knit um, the foot Monday and Tuesday and I think I knit the toe on Wednesday so needless to say I was able to knit a sock for my husband fairly quickly which is bad news because now he's gonna know that I am I don't take forever to knit his gigantor feet socks I mean look at this it's like it's bigger than my head guys he has big feet <clears throat> But I've slowed down over the last couple of days because um, I've just been busy at work and then the kids have been crazy. I don't know what is going on or what is in the air. Spring is in the air, but they're insane. And knitting time has been very limited because they're just so full of energy and they're running around and like wrestling and fighting not in a bad way, but just in a rambunctious, too much energy kind of way. And um, my allergies have kicked in pretty strongly. As I've said, this is my allergy season. So I do not have the level of energy that they have. So it's all I can do to just kind of keep up with them. And my husband is feeling it as well. So knitting time has been very limited. But here's my hoe. <laughs> So this yarn is Patton's Croy in the blue striped rag colorway. I love this color. This color never disappoints. I've posted them on Instagram and many people agree with me that just this color is one of my favorite Patton's Croy colors and I hope that they never discontinue it. I'm sure that they will at some point, but they're so fun. It's such a fun color. The heel I did in some yarn that I had in my stash, and we'll see how it holds up, but I didn't have anything else in a navy color. This is Osterman's, Osterman Step Royal, Royale, and it is a combination of merino, nylon, silk, and I think there's like 5% cashmere or something in there. But I thought the silk content and the nylon content would actually add a lot of strength. So I think it's like 60% merino, 15 or 20% nylon, 10% silk, and then whatever percent is left cashmere. <laughs> I don't know where the tag went because I had it on my desk, but Joshua really likes ball bands. I don't know why, but he likes to play with them. He's like a cat. <laughs> Batting them around. So it's somewhere in the house, but you know, you can look it up online. It's uh, like I said, Osterman Step Royale and the colorway is just navy. <clears throat> Save for the toe. My husband said that he likes having the heels and toes a contrasting color because it helps him line it up on his foot when he's putting it on. He's still kind of not used to the whole um, heel flap and gusset. He loves the construction and it fits his foot really well, but um, he likes that actual extra visual indicator. So I always do contrasting heels and toes for him. So that's the first talk. And then I made sure I immediately cast on the second sock because otherwise I would be tempted to use the sock needles to make more socks for myself. Because I'm devious like that. I love socks. I have like 30 pairs of socks, guys. So I do not need more socks. But I want more socks. And, yeah, it's hard to control myself. So this ball did not start at the same place as the other ball, but he said he really didn't care. I would have had to wind off an entire stripe sequence to get back to the blue so I would have had to wind that much off of the yarn and honestly I didn't have a lot left of the first ball Did I... yeah I have it in here okay so this is what I had left of the ball after knitting his first sock so I didn't want to wind that much off of it 
So anyway, I just started it. It's only off by one stripe, just by that light blue stripe. So they'll be ever so slightly offset from each other. And he's like, I do not care about that at all. So anyway, they're not going to be perfectly matched. And that's okay. It would bother me. I do actually try to really match my stripe sequences, but he's very laid back about that kind of stuff. He's just happy that he's getting hand knit socks, which is fine. That's what I love about him. So there's my boring navy blue ball of Osterman stuff. Boring navy blue commercial yarn. Not very interesting. And like I said, I just finished the ribbing last night for the cuff and I, I've started on the leg. So the leg goes really fast once I'm not doing two by two ribbing. It'll zoom. So I expect to get the leg done probably today, maybe tomorrow. Depends on what we're doing for Mother's Day. So tomorrow is Mother's Day in the U.S. For those of you celebrating in the U.S., happy Mother's Day. Uh, so I don't know yet what my mom is doing. I called her and left her a message, but um, it'll depend on what if anything we're doing together so if we end up meeting up at all and like going to a restaurant or something like that then I probably won't get a lot of knitting time because I have to help wrangle the children at a restaurant but um, if we're not doing anything then potentially I could get through the foot as well and we're also going to try to do some gardening this weekend so that's going to be a lot of work too um, our garden is a little bit out of control right now. We didn't really do anything with it last year or the year before because Joshua was so little. And so it's kind of gotten away from us as far as weeds. There's a lot of poison ivy out there now, which comes from the birds and deer poo. Because the birds eat the berries and the deer eat, like, the whole plant. <clears throat> so, of course, then they go everywhere and... They spread the seeds around so there's a lot up by the house which I don't I don't mind it in far back yard we can tell the kids to keep out of that area but when it gets close to the house it's really hard to keep them out of it and I want to nip it in the bud before it gets um, kind of spread everywhere so either later today or tomorrow is going to be like putting on the gloves and the long sleeves and the pants and going out and pulling all that crap off and it's gonna be a lot of work so yeah, there may not be a lot of knitting this weekend. So that's my Patton's Croix socks for my husband. And then next up in my newly sewn bag, did I show this on the last podcast? I don't remember if I had it done or not. I can't recall. I may have had the pieces cut out, but maybe I hadn't sewn it together yet. The weeks are all blurring together, guys. So anyway, if I've shown it, I'm sorry, but I'll go ahead and show it again. So I sewed this bag using the Hue Loco holiday bag tutorial. I think I even used the measurements from it because I have some cardboard cutouts that I now use for this basic size bag, and they were... Um, based on the measurements from her tutorial. Um, so this fabric I had cut out for a while. And this fabric was a sub-in. I was actually going to use a different fabric. And I do remember talking about this, but Megwin cut some little um, wedges out of it to make a project for herself. And so that left me with like big squares that I couldn't fix. But I actually am happy that she did that because I prefer the pink. I was going to put a purple with it, with uh, pink hearts on it. And I like the plain, like slightly tie-dyed effect pink. This was just some fabric I had in my fat quarter stash. I should just call it my fat quarter stash because I have a lot of fat quarters. And then I love this one. 
it makes me think of Harry Potter just because they use uh, quills all the time, quills and ink bottles, and there's um, flying keys, and then there's a part where Hermione casts a spell of like birds flying around Ron and pecking him when um, they start to really like each other, but he's kind of mean to her. And then, of course, it's on, like, notebook paper. I just really like it. It's whimsical and fun. It's pretty. And then inside, I did use the um, fabric I had cut out before. I don't know if you can see it, but I just put a little patch on the part that Megwin chomped out of it. <laughs> Because it, it's just going to be on the inside of the bag and nobody's going to see it. So it's fine. So it's this fun kind of medallion fabric. Sorry, my nose is all itchy. One thing I did differently with this bag that I had not done on previous bags is I added a handle. So my prior ones, I just kind of sewed them up and I thought about a handle, but I never really did it. Um, so I cut some grow grain ribbon that, again, I have a lot of grow grain ribbon from doing uh, button plackets for sweaters, mostly for baby sweaters, because when I give people baby sweaters, I, I like to make them fancy. So I have quite a bit of grow grain ribbon because you buy the whole spool, not just the piece that you need. So this is in brown, which I thought was nice with the, these drawings are actually a, a chocolatey brown color. I don't know if that's coming out or not, but they're not black. They're chocolate brown. So they're the same color as this. So I think that really finished it off nicely. So I'm going to do that on my bags going forward because the ribbon is nice and sturdy and it's a little bit different. I don't have to then try to cut out fabric and save a certain amount and match or contrast the trim. Um, I took the ribbon and cut the size I wanted plus I think about that much and then I sewed a seam back and forth a couple times on the ribbon to give it some sturdiness inside so that's actually it inset a little bit and then I ran the seam along um, so that it would not unravel or potentially cut itself or even if the seam pulled through it would have that secondary seam as like a catch for it. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. And then I just put a little progress keeper that came for free on a skein of Chili Knits yarn. It's like a little bonnet. I eventually would like to get a little ink bottle or a quill or maybe a key for this. I'm still on the lookout. So you guys that find all these charms, where do you find them? Because I went to my Joann's and looked and they had absolutely no charms at all. They just had a lot of beads in the jewelry section. So maybe I'm looking in the wrong part. Maybe the charms are somewhere else. So let me know if you guys know where to get charms and maybe I'm just looking in the wrong place. We have a Joann's, Michael's, and Hobby Lobby all close. I prefer not to shop at Hobby Lobby, but um, Michael's is fine, and Joann's is fine, too. Um, so, yeah. Let me know. So, inside of that bag, <laughs> we sort of went from knitting to sewing and back again. I have um, a new cast on, and this one is the Hidden stairways. I keep saying staircases or stairways, and the one I want to say is not the right one. And it's another Erica Luter pattern. So, like I said, I'm knitting through all of the Erica Luter patterns on my own. I'm going to have all the Harry Potter ones. And this I'm also using as my entry for the House Pride Cow, House Pride Color Cow in Meg's group, who is Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, and I am a Hufflepuff. I was sorted into Hufflepuff on Pottermore. I sort of suspect I might be a Slitherpuff, but it's been a while since I've done the quiz. 
So I did not have anything in my stash that was true like yellow and black, but I wanted something that I probably would wear a little bit more. So I went with yellow and dark gray. So here's the yarn that I'm using and it's still Huffle Puffy, right? This is fiber optic yarns. I don't remember the base. It's the one that is her cashmere sock. And this colorway is Mellow Grello, so the gray yellow. And I've had it in my stash since last year. This is the only thing that I bought at Wool Gathering, which is our fiber festival that we have locally every year. So here's what I have so far on that. And I stopped working on these to work on my husband's socks. So it's a very, again, she has a lot of really vanilla patterns, which is nice because they're fun to do and very basic, but they add a little bit of interest. So it's kind of a pattern where it goes one way, there's a landing, and then it goes the other way, landing back the other way is the idea of what you're supposed to be seeing in that. And again, the lighting is terrible, so you can't really see the pattern. And on it is a new stitch marker, which was an acquisition from the Bad Wolf Girl Studios Etsy shop. And it's a snitch marker. So it's a little golden snitch. And it's a progress keeper. You can also get a stitch marker, I think. I think you can get either finish. I have a lot of stitch markers, so I've been buying quite a few progress keepers because I like to have them on every project and I don't really have enough to have them on every project. So that is that one. And then the other one in this same bag, because they this bag size is really good for holding two fall or less projects. So this is a another one skein project. And this is using one of my sock yarns from the most recent Vole and Vine Yarn Sock Club, which I got on the Blitz base. So they're all sparkle yarns. I have a, I'm getting all sparkle yarns recently. I'm really in love with sparkles. And I had a lot of plain yarns, so it's nice to build out my sparkle stash. So this is the Moonburn colorway. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a mix of dark and plum purples, charcoal grays, and a very light gray. Super nice. And I am starting on socks for the deputy headmistress, which are Professor McGonagall themed socks. Again, and this is another Erica Luter pattern. So it's not very interesting so far. All I've done is the one by one rib. But when I'm starting a new sock, I try to quickly get through the rib portion. And then, you know, then I can kind of flip flop between whips. But since the rib is the least interesting to me, I do try to get that 20 rows on the needles fairly quickly if I make up my mind that I want to make something. So those two are on hold right now. I'm not going to let myself work on them until I complete my husband's socks because I do think he needs to have another pair now that he has one out of rotation until I figure out the best way to fix it. So he needs another alternate and he'll stop wearing through stuff as much if he has more socks. I also think a couple of the Erica Luter patterns... Oh, I should have mentioned that. They're on 72 stitch count. So that is way too many stitches for me. I tried even going down to a size zero and they were still huge. So for the Professor McGonagall socks, I cut out one pattern repeat. So they're on a 60 stitch count and I think that'll be fine. 60 or 64 is okay for me. But I might use those 72 stitch pattern, 72 stitch count pattern for Josh's socks because I use a 72 stitch 
count for his socks normally, his vanilla socks. So one of the ones I want to make is Snape stockings. So I might actually do those for my husband. Um, we'll see if I have anything appropriate for him because I do try to pick a little bit harder wearing yarns for him. So I tend to make a lot of Patton's Croy or um, BFL sock base for him. Um, and now, yeah, I have that Rambouillet. And I might try to get some Coriadale. I'm not sure who carries a Coriadale base. I think that um, Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi might carry that base. I think that's who Amber said she gets hers from. So maybe I'll look and see for that. See, it's already cold. Or cool. It's warmer than my coffee, though, so I'm going to go with it. Um, okay, next on the needles is my snowmelt shawl. Living in my Volan Vine yarns bag from my bestie Kristen. Um, this one, I did not get a lot of progress on it, but I did finish a full repeat of the lace so you can see what the next clues lace repeat is going to look like so you can see it's almost like these little scallops and I do really like it so I think it's this then a little just a row of the contrasting color which for me is this rose color and then you go right back to the scallop lace it's not a very long clue so this is clue two and then clue three, I get to use my fun, pretty, rainbowy yarn again. So, I do love it, but um, every time I touch this shawl, my son decides that that's the time to drive mommy crazy. <laughs> I think it has toddler alarm in it. Because he was sleeping very, very sweetly on the beanbag chair in our living room and I was knitting on my husband's socks and I was like, well, hey, he's been sleeping for probably like 20 minutes very calmly. So maybe I should switch to my shawl because I should take advantage of the times when he's sleeping. I can work on a vanilla sock while he's awake. Um, no sooner did I touch it, touch it, than he was like, ah, ah, ah. And I put it down really fast and he was like, hmm. So, there's some kind of toddler wake-up juice in this shawl. I don't know. So anyway, it'll get done. It will get done. But it may just be a um, knitting it at work during lunch project. I don't know. It's a when I feel like it shawl. There's no deadline. It's just for me. It's not for any cows or anything like that. And then... <laughs> okay. Another new cast on, because apparently I'm a crazy cast on lady, is my quill shawl. And last time I showed you a whole set of yarn story. And I was trying to convince myself, oh, the Poe, the Poe, it's fine, it's going to be great, it looks okay with the paranormal. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look okay. And you guys need to tell me when things are not going to be okay. So when I was editing the podcast, I was like, I can't even tell the difference between those two yarns. They blend together so much that I don't like it. I just didn't like it. And when you don't like something, don't, don't try to convince yourself that you'll learn to like it. Because you won't. Or at least I won't. I need to learn this about myself. Sorry, my balls kind of got all unraveled inside of this bag. And it's got a weird set of yarn coming out of the bottom of it. So unfortunately, that's going to be an issue as well. I see where it's... Maybe I can just 
because it's not going to be for a little while that I'm going to get to that portion, but it's going to get progressively worse if I don't tuck it in at least a little bit. Okay. You can see, like, it's not going to be till I get to this far in the ball because I center pull balled it. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so here's the yarn that I knew I wanted to use, and it is Paranormal by... Kristen Wollenvine Yarns. It's in her blitz base. Probably can't. I'm about ready to switch over to a new set. Oh, as I was saying, and now I have a completely different camera because my phone finished recording. Um, but my battery's charged. Yay! So the first yarn that I wanted to use is my Volan Vine Yarns on the Blitz base, and this is Paranormal. So it has these really fun pops of neon green, which you would think would make it be really crazy bright, but it actually is a really fun neutral. So it's like a neutral with a little bit of interest to it. And there's also some speckles in there which you can't really see, but you see them a little bit more when knitting with it. So there are speckles of a dusky, plummy purple. So then, if you'll recall, for the purple, I was going to use this, which is my Velvet Grapes colorway from Malabrigo Yarns. I've had this in my stash for freaking ever. 10 years, 10 or 11 years. Um, but I don't think that this is the right color. It seemed too dark for what I was going to use it for. I do have another idea for it for a shawl and I think it will actually work out better and that shawl combo works better than the combo I was going to use. So let me get there. So I had a different skein in my stash of Volan Vine Yarns on the Narwhal base in the Black Pearl colorway. So this one I was originally going to pair with my Bouche de Noel in a shawl. They match and they do match well. However, I think it really matched those pops of the dusky purple in the Paranormal. So there's that. So it's a grayish purple color, and because the narwhal has some silk in it, I think it's BFL and silk and nylon, it has a really nice sheen to it. So it is pearly black pearl. So I had those two, and then I was like, well, the Poe really doesn't go now. Now it just looks like a big, bleh, very, very the same color tone. So I needed a little pop. So I had told myself I wasn't going to get the sparkly grim, but I needed the sparkly grim. So that's fine. Kristen dyed some sparkly grim for, I think it was two shop updates ago. So I got a skein of that. And it has got gold Stellina in it, and the other Blitzed has silver Stellina in it. So here's that. And it's so pretty. That was originally what I wanted for the shawl and I didn't catch it in the update where I bought the Paranormal. But my original thought was Paranormal, Violet, Star Galactica, and Sparkly Grim. So I basically came to the same place subbing in Black Pearl for Violet, Star Galactica. And I'm really really happy with my color palette. So there's my Sparkly Grim. And it is a charcoal gray with, as I said, the, the gold Stellina. And now for the reveal. Are you guys excited? Are you excited? You should be excited. Bum ba da na! I'm gonna have to hold it this way. <laughs> so here's what I have so far on my shawl. This is the quill shawl pattern by Helen Stewart, Curious Handmaid, and this is from her first Shawl Society Club. 
I'm still on clue one. It was a mystery knit along. It has now all since been revealed. And of course it's a triangular shawl as if you couldn't tell. I've shown you the pattern before. But I love the how these three colors play together. And I just added that, that stripe of grim this morning. So I'm really happy that I'll have that to show you all the three together. So this is the paranormal, this one is the black pearl, and then this one stripe is the, the grim. And it goes like this for a little ways where it's got the stripes of the two with just one contrasting stripe of the third color. And then the third color comes in in the bottom lace, lace portion more so then it'll be this plus the black pearl together and I think this is going to really do it as far as the neutral piece that I wanted to have to wear with a lot of my different stuff because while that purple is purple it's a really neutral purple so I think it'll go with a lot of things and it will really um, bring an extra bit of interest to I wear a lot of black and gray I think probably a lot of professional women wear a lot of black and gray because that tends to be like our suiting material is black or gray um, dresses and then you know skirts and stuff or pants tend to be black or gray so yeah then I can throw on a more colorful top or whatever or a more neutral top with this so I love it. I love it guys. I just want to knit on it all the time and it's easier than snow melt so it's probably gonna make snow melt go into hiding. <laughs> but that's okay. And then with my order, um, Kristen surprised me by making me a little notions pouch so she had cut out one for herself and she had extra fabric so she made an extra one for me. And you guys, oh my god, Kristen, you are such a sweetie and yeah, so generous. Mwah. I love it. So it reminds me of Beauty and the Beast and Paint by Numbers um, pictures. So it actually has little numbers in the different sections. And it's those very antique type roses. And some of the parts are colored and some are not. Oh, I just love it. It's got a peach ribbon. I do have my little progress keeper on there right now, but I'm not pulling with it. It's my super, super miniatures. One that my husband fixed for me. So inside it's just got these polka dots. And I have some little minis in there. So this one I got from um, Sarah of the Love Sock Wool Podcast, and I'll show you in a minute. This actually needs to go in a different bag, so I'm going to keep that up. Uh, what I'm doing with those. And then she included two little minis. There's some stitch markers loose in there, sorry. Um, this one is aphrodisiac from her snow melt that she just finished. And then this one is the last unicorn. I want this color so badly. Because I love The Last Unicorn. That is, that was my gateway to anime. I watched it when I was like eight years old. I got my tonsils taken out and I stayed at my great uncle Jim's house because I couldn't go to school. I had some complications from that surgery. So I couldn't go to school for a while. So my mom had me stay with my um, great uncle Jim and my great aunt Janet who were beekeepers. And they let me watch crap tons of TV and eat popsicles on their couch. And I watched The Last Unicorn, and little did I know, I thought that it was just a cartoon. I didn't even realize that there could be those kinds of cartoons that were a lot more serious. And I cried my freaking eyes out. That movie, oh my gosh. But I love anime, and I watch lots of anime, and I own lots of anime at this point so um, yeah that has a lot of good childhood memories for me and I think this colorway she did for um, Stitches West gosh I'm forgetting who it was a collaboration with 
little skein in the big wool maybe there was a project bag and then a coordinated skein but once that uh, exclusivity period is up I do think that she's gonna dye more of this I hope she dyes more of it Kristen dye more of it I love the mint mint is one of my favorite colors and look at those little pops of pink and purple oh, speckledy speckledy goodness so anyway, that other mini is definitely gonna go in my blanket. So that's my little notions pouch. That is my quill shawl by Helen Stewart. And Kristen is hosting a curious handmaid along in the Yarngasm podcast group. Neither of these are probably gonna be done in time to enter them. But if you want to enter and you're working on something, I think if it was not if it was under 50% done before the cow started, then it's okay to enter whips. And that's going through the end of May. So, I don't think I'm going to get either of these shawls done by the end of May. But you never know. I might just get weird and start crazily working on them. <clears throat> and then my last whip. I'm looking around to make sure that's my last whip. My last whip I did any work on uh, is my beekeeper's quilt. So... I have been trying to knit at least one hexi puff a day. I'm doing them in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee and um, eating my breakfast. It's a little bit easier to do than getting into a bigger project. So I either do that or do a couple rows on a sock. So last week I was trying to knit all, through all my Terra minis, which are from Spin Monkeys. And this week, I was knitting through my ceremonies. See what I did there? You see what I did? <laughs> From Love Suckle. So she had sent me a nice little bag of minis a while back. I feel like I'm turning back and forth. I'm really sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy. I've got stuff on both sides of me. I don't have a table in front of me. That's what I need. So she sent me a little list of all of the minis that were included. Just great. I have not got through very many yet, but I do have them wound up, and this is where this one needs to go, because it's a No Makers in Trick or Treat. So I've never got any of her Halloween colors this year. This year is going to be the year where I'm going to order some. But aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. This one is um, a homespun house in Birthday Cake. And then, I love this one. I think that one is, uh, Nitpick Stroll in crayons. And I've made one out of this mini. There it is. And I think that's the only one I've done for her minis so far. So last week I made two of these. One of these. One of these. And then the rest I've tied onto my blanket. And this one was a random mini. I don't remember who I got it from. It is, um, Cascade Heritage Silk Paints yarn in the Sunrise Walker colorway. It's a very nice blue with some green tones as well. So there's that one. And I've noticed that I am enjoying stuffing my hexi puffs a little more firmly. So some of my older hexi puffs, I did not stuff them as much. And I actually don't like how flat that they have become just with touching them and working with them. So going forward, I'm going to make sure that I stuff them a little more completely because I do want this quilt to be very puffy and nice. Because it's a hexi puff quilt. So puffiness is necessary. And mostly I have the minis in this bag, which again is another one that I made myself. 
but I do have some in this bag too because this bag holds my stuffing as well and this one is from um, Sarah Love Sock Wool and I put my completed minis or my completed hexes in that one until such time as I can tie them on my blanket so without further ado the blanket oh boy dropping fuzz I haven't shown this to you guys in a while, so I thought I'd show you my progress. It's becoming something. It is really becoming something. I only tied this one half on, so it's flopping around. Oh, poor Hexy Buff. That's one of the ones I finished last week, too. I need to remedy that. Because it's flippity floppity. You should at least tie it on two sides. So here it is. My son Joshua absolutely loves this freaking blanket. He wants it. So I'm trying to make it big enough so he can use it for a little while until I can get it big enough where everybody can use it because getting it to baby blanket size shouldn't be that hard. Um, there's the Cheeto one that I did. This one is another Terra Spin Monkeys one. That one at the top that's the greeny colors and this blue one, this stripey one. But, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying working on it again, and I feel like it's starting to become something. And just so you can see the back, which I've shown, but it's been a while, you just tie them. So it's really easy to add on or take out if you decide that you don't like the placement of where you put it. Really, really easy to switch them out. Which is part of the reason that I really wanted to do this one. It's what appealed to me about this design because I think over time, you know, these are going to wear out just like uh, socks, right? Parts of it are going to wear and it'll be really easy to just lift out a hexi and put a new one in. Or to lift it out and darn it and then put it back in, depending. And I like the very scrappy look of it. It reminds me of the rag rugs, like in um, Anne of Green Gables. They talk about Marilla's rag rugs and how she makes the most beautiful ones and they're really durable and they use up all their scraps. So this makes me feel very much like that, that I'm using up all of my sock yarn. One of my ties is going for I figured out a better way of knotting them more recently. So I really need to go back and redo some of the tying that I've done previously with that better, newer knotting method. It tells you how to do it in the pattern, but I feel like that way is actually not real great. It's using a square knot. And square knots, my friends, are not really made to stay. That's why we use them to tie our shoes, because they're meant to be pulled out very easily. So for something that's going to be sitting there getting pulled on and worn upon, they're a terrible solution. There are better, there are better knots in the world. So anyway, um, that is that. I think I've shown you that for long enough. The Keeper's Quilt by Tiny Owl Knits. And then I thought... This week I might share with you knitting fails because, um, yeah, not everything I make is successful and I have something that I want to rip out. So before I frog it, I will catalog it for the world. Now I think some of this is because of the pattern. I would never recommend this pattern to anyone. Um, the person who designed it was actually quite rude about um, pattern support. Um, it's kind of across lots of people. Um, I posted some stuff about what I did to adjust for some pretty glaring errors and um, yeah there's a lot of stories about it. So anyway I wouldn't recommend the pattern. The sizing is really bad. The yarn estimates are terrible. It's the Lyric Tree hoodie, but I bought it years and years ago, and I knit it up, and I hate it, so it is going away. 
So it has this really beautiful tree on the back. That's the part that I like about it is the tree. It's knit in super bulky yarn, which again, like unless you're going to have a really big cozy sweater, super bulky yarn is super bulky. So this is supposed to be a more fitted sweater. So it actually looks really weird and it's not long enough. So it makes my torso look really short and it has this gigantic hood which just hangs there and covers up the tree, which was the whole point of the pattern. And the hood doesn't look very good on, there's just all kinds of reasons. So in the front, it's got these cables around the neckline that have eyelets and they're super tight. So they actually like pull across my bust and then like this V goes down so far that it's kind of down near my belly and then I've got very little sweater before it stops. It just, it looks terrible on me. These sleeves make my arms look really weird. I do not like it. I finished it and I have never worn it. I tried it on and I was really upset that I wasted so much time knitting it because it was before I knit with my left hand continental style. So it took me a lot longer. It used to take me a lot longer to knit things. So it's a lot of work and it um, did not turn out at all how I expected. I hate the fit of it. Um, yeah. So I'm going to frog it. But I wanted to show it to everyone to show you. I, hey, I, I knit things I hate too. I have frogged whole sweaters before. This will be my second full sweater that I've frogged due to fit issues. The other one, um, it was actually just bad yarn choice for the pattern. So it was the Tangled Yoke Cardigan, I think, by Uni Jang. Um, and it's really pretty. It's in an interweave knits issue from a while back because I knit it while I was in California. And it was knitted in Rowan Felted Tweed. And this was, again, really early on in my knitting career. It was my first adult sweater that I knit for me. I had knit several baby sweaters. And um, I used uh, Fiesta Yarns Ballet, which is a mix of alpaca, tencel, and wool. So you see where I'm going here, right? So something that was 100% wool, which Rowan Felted Tweed is other than the Donegal Nips, which, you know, it's like 5% of it. But structure of a complete wool, not even a merino, it's like a wool wool. And then going to something that's maybe 40% wool, but it's mostly alpaca and tencel. So very drapey. It's a beautiful yarn, and I love the yarn. But the sweater would fit me for all of like 10 minutes, and then it started sagging or draping because it's drapey. So I um, frogged that entire sweater and I still have the yarn, but I need to find the right thing for it. So I'm going to knit it into something that calls for a 100% alpaca yarn. I have something high up in my queue. I think it's the um, morning mist pullover. It's going to bug me, so I'm going to look it up while I'm talking to you. It's a very recently released pattern. And I really like it a lot. And it calls for 100% alpaca yarn, so I think it'll be really pretty with that variegated yarn. Because it's a real basic pattern. Sweet Morning by Maria Bourne. So it is just reverse stockinette on the front and then the back is lace and the sleeves are lace. It has a cowl neck but it also has an option for um, just a plain neckline just crocheting around the neck. I'll insert a couple of pictures here 
so that you can see the front and then that really pretty lace panel on the back and the panel on the sleeves. And there's one that has a great, um, just showing that plain neckline. <clears throat> So I think that's what I will use that long homeless yarn for. And it'll be good. It'll finally have something to live in. And then moving on to acquisitions. Oh, I'm going to put this on because I'm freezing. This is a scarf from my Aunt Lynn that my mom gave to me. And I posted on Instagram, but... If anybody here knows too, I would love to have a sweater out of this yarn because it is so gorgeous. It is like a pumpkin-y color, but it has so much depth to it. So it has colors of red, green, and gold in it. I am pretty darn sure that it's Madeline Tosh vintage because my aunt had an obsession with Madeline Tosh vintage. I'm pretty sure it's also a discontinued colorway, but um, a couple people gave suggestions of what they think it is. So if you all know what it is, let me know, because I'm on the lookout for more of it. So I have several acquisitions this week, fabric and yarn. Um, some of them came in before, or I had ordered them many, many weeks ago, but they just came in because they were like died to order. Um, so the first one is from Bad Wolf Girl Studios. This came with the snitch marker that I ordered. Um, so it is Ginny Weasley on her sparkle base. And her sparkle base, Meg, this is seriously the softest sparkle yarn that I've ever felt. It's crazy soft. It's so nice. I love it. I want all the sparkle yarn from her now because it's so freaking soft. So Ginny Weasley. I love it. I'm not sure if it's going to knit up striped or not because she doesn't do um, little samples of the yarn knitted up. So it's, we'll see how it's going to turn out. But I'm very excited to find out. This might be my next on the needles after I finish the three pairs of socks that are already on the needles because I'm a crazy person. But i got to get to 12 for my box of socks. And I'm not even close yet. I only have one. That's the only one that counts so far that I've knit because the others are ones that I had on the needles going into this year. So Kristen did not allow whips. So I am behind the eight ball in a big fat way. Um, no, one other pair counts. My Anne of Green Gables socks count. So I'm at two out of 12. And it's May. But I have a bunch of pairs with like one done now that are from this year. So I just need to get going. So anyway, that's Jenny Weasley from Bad Wolf Girl Studios on Etsy. And she has the Bad Wolf Girl sits in its podcast. And then I got two skeins from... No Makers. She had a special colorway that was new for summer, and it's called There's Bird Poop on My Swing Set. Just the name alone makes me giggle every time that I say it. So when I knit socks out of this, I am fairly sure that they will be infused with childish glee, and Megwin loves poo jokes. Yeah, poop is funny when you're seven years old. So and it's gorgeous and it's yellow. Ah! It's yellow with some purple and blue speckles. Blue speckles. And then those sort of look green in the parts where they cross over the yellow. And then it's got cream as well. Isn't that going to make the most fun pair of socks, you guys? Oh my god. So I just got it on the house gnome base because I knew I was going to make socks out of it. So I have to remedy this situation where I have no yellow socks and yellow is my favorite color. There needs to be yellow socks. And then the other one I got is Hermione. Again on the 
no, this one's on bungalow gnome because she was out of house gnome. So that is her BFL nylon base. But this is for socks for Megwin and probably socks for me as well. I can get socks for both of us out of this skein. But Megwin loves her nickname, her Megwinny. <laughs> And Hermione is her favorite character from Harry Potter. So she needs some Hermione socks. And she was so jazzed about me having this for her. And her socks are fast, too. I have admired this color for so long. I'm very excited to have a skein of it. So that was my No Makers order. And then my last skein from Kristen's uh, Sock Club came. And so that wasn't really a new order, but again, it was um, Moody Yarn, right? Okay, and that is Blue and Vine Yarns. And it is Tequila Mermaid. Mermaids! And glitter! And tequila! <laughs> um, yeah, this color. I almost want another sock head. Which this one is um, one of my yarn splits as well. In the... Um... Why am I blanking on this? Gustav Klimt Water Sprites. Thank you. Thank you, Brain. Water Sprites. All right. So Tequila Mermaid is a base of, again, that mint green with some lime green. It has pink speckles, orange speckles, purple speckles, rust and orange, light orange, I guess, and blue speckles. It's a hot mess of awesome. It is going to make the most gorgeous Thing. I don't know what it'll be yet. It might be socks because I feel like I don't want to be too precious with my skeins, right? I hold them and hold them and hold them and I don't knit with them. And I need to knit with them. So that was my last thing as far as yarn goes. And then fabric. So Megwin and I went to Joann's together and I replenished my supply of zippers so this zipper is actually going to be for the tea cups and saucers and um, teapots bag that I've been talking about making but I didn't have a zipper for it I also ran out of interfacing and then I needed now that I've decided I'm going to do grow grain ribbon for handles I needed some that would match so I found this one and I really like that little bit of white stitching because I'm using a white and red fabric for the bottom. So I think it'll tie it together. And then they had a bunch of Harry Potter fabric at Joann's. And Megwin really wanted a couple of uh, summer dresses. So either sundresses or like skirts with uh, the ability to put t-shirts with them. So this one is one. And then this one I actually got to make project bags. I don't think it would make a very good um, skirt, but I think it would make great, great project bags. One of which I will probably have as a prize for the Random Fandoms cow, which is going right now in our group. I didn't have a chance to announce that on the podcast, so I will talk about the details in a minute. But I thought these two, like this one, and then the contrast of this one, and probably this on the inside as well because just because I think I got two yards of this and one yard of this so I'll have enough to make a bag for me and a bag for you and then this one as well it is all the characters and it says Dumbledore's army on it so this one Megwin wants to have as a sundress and I think it would be fun to do one of those that has like the ribbon straps so I might use that red for the ribbon straps to give it some color and then that would be just really cute for a dress for her 
for the summer. And then I got, oh my god, I can't reach. Lots and lots of yards of interfacing, which is not interesting to you guys. I got a pattern and that's what I'm trying to find. Okay. Got this gray grow grain ribbon for um, some of the fabric I showed last time. The seashells one has a lot of this gray tone, so I think the gray will be really good for that. And then for making for my Gwen, yeah, she got she got some glittery scotch tape. She's constantly asking me for tape. She uses like all my washi tape. She's a crazy person. Um, she got a pattern for her American Girl doll. And then American Girl actually has some really good simplicity patterns. So this one is for sewing four outfits. Um, it has shorts, a skirt, like cropped pants, and a dress. So I think maybe that dress... I will make a couple of and I really like the shorts and skirt and they're just elastic waist and also the tote bag the, that cute little purse is in this pattern as well so it has all the pieces so it's simplicity D0681 the shirts are for knit fabric but that's good. They're good basic t-shirt type um, shapes. And she uses tank tops quite a lot. So that'll be great to have a good basic you know, tank top shape for her. So I'm really excited. Um, I did cut out the pattern pieces for my skirt that I showed last time that I was going to make in the pink. But I had to do some sizing. So that pattern, that sizing is insane. Now, I know that it's just numbers and I shouldn't worry about it, but like for my waist size, I had to cut out a size 18. And I normally wear size 4 or size 6 in store bought clothes, if that gives you an idea. And then I had to grade it down for the hips. As I was saying, for the hips, I had to grade it down to the size 14 because with my waist measurement, um, which is about 31 and a half. Um, the hip, the corresponding hip measurement was 42. My hip measurement is like 37 ish, 37 and a half. So that was going to be way too much. So, um, yeah, I just like the waist, I cut out the size 18 and then I just, um, went to the lines for the 14 on the skirt part and I hope it works out we'll see we'll see what happens it might really suck who knows I'll let you know <laughs> when I get to it because um, sewing while it takes less time than knitting it does take a more um, dedicated block of time so I have to find like two hours or a three hour block in a day to really just focus on doing it and I don't always have that so I'm assuming I will probably do my um, sewing in stages last week uh, at the same time this two hour block I did all of the uh, cutting out the pattern pieces and doing the grading which just which took a little while and then this week I was thinking about cutting out the actual fabric, but I think instead I'm going to finish that tea set bag because I've been wanting to do that for a while and what was holding me back was having the interfacing. Um, so I will let you know as I go along how that goes. And Megwin also really needs shorts because it's starting to get warmer despite this today it is going to be summer soon and she'll be out of school and so I want to make sure that I've got those ready to go for her so those may jump up a little bit in the priority list and then I will talk about the cow first and then I will show you the uh, next on the needles so for the cow random fandoms 
I've already talked about what my idea was, and it's basically any fandom that you like or follow. Books, movies, TV shows, whatever you can think of. If it's something that you like, um, anime, graphic novels, that kind of stuff. Then it could be your yarn, it could be your project, it could be just that it reminds you of that fandom. Uh, FOs are what are going to qualify, but whips are absolutely allowed. So if you're already working on something and it fits into the criteria, enter it. I don't care. I'm really fast and loose here. Double dipping is absolutely fine. I've yet to see anyone who says you cannot double dip. I've never seen anyone say that actually of anything that I've participated in. So I'd be really interested to see where, where double dipping was discouraged. That's pretty much it. I'm going to sew at least one project bag, maybe two project bags. If you would like to donate a prize, I always welcome prize donations. Um, I've had people send me some yarn in the past. I've had a couple of indie dyers say they would like to donate a prize. Um, so I may reach out to them about this. And um, it'll depend on how many entries we get. If we don't get very many, then I think one or two prizes is plenty but I'm also running it for three months so maybe more prizes would be good because it's gonna be a longer duration we'll see so that's what I've got going on there so I'm gonna talk about next on the needles really quick I keep looking over here because my yarn is over there which I've now screwed up the skeining for <laughs> Nina Slacker. Okay. So, just to show you the new color combo. Because this yarn's not going to sit and languish in my stash for too much longer. These two are what I'm going to do together. So this is the Bouche de Noel, and this is the uh, Velvet Grapes. I think they even go better than the Black Pearl. I'm up here. I have something to give to you. Okay. I painted it at the end. Great. Yeah, for you. Okay. But the teacher who said the gym they did the writing has my name on it and it says Happy Mother's Day! <gasps> wow, wow careful, don't bump my thing. There you go. Oh my gosh, what did you make it with? Fork, sponges, oh, dot sponges. I never even. I can, Keep it back from my yarn a little bit. Can there you go. Forks. See? Then I used the sponges. It's really cool. I would never have paint. thought to use a fork. Then some forks for a stem and flowers. Then another fork stem, fork flower. And then a sponge flower with little sponge with little sponge dot for a stem. Cool. Those ladies at the gym are so creative. Oh yeah, I was surprised too. And I also painted with a little Q tip oh, yeah. to uh, make the lumps. Yeah, Q-tips Q Q -tips are quite useful as artistic yeah. tools. I use Q-tips to paint the lumps. Mm -hmm. So the so I like use them to shove over some paint yeah. to make it look all Make lumpy. it textured. Yeah. Yeah. You texturize it's still it. Still wet. Kind of like the guy that did the plaster. Okay, you want to hold it up for people to see it? But it feels nice still. Okay. <laughs> Can you see it okay? Yeah. Can you tell them about it? Well, you just told them about it. They could hear you the whole time. Can you tell them a little more? I don't know what else to tell them. <laughs> tell them that. Tell them stuff that you think would fit, okay? Anything you want. Okay. Do well, I think it's ask? awesome. I really like it. It reminds me of flowers. I like that's all the colors. Cause it, that's because it is flowers. And Mom said she would never think of using forks That's and right. sponges to make flowers mm -hmm. or stems. I'm creative. I love it. And I made it myself. Mm -hmm. And it's for Mom. Happy Mother's Day! Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm going to put it over here to dry because it still feels a little bit damp. Yeah. I want to make sure today, it doesn't get ruined. Could you sew those suits? My American girl doll is getting cranky that she doesn't have a new suit. The only, the other suit... I'm going to see if Grammy can head. help me with that, remember? talked about it yeah okay so then this I want to use for the latest uh, shawl society to 
Don't put your fingers in front of it. Thank you. You're doing good. This one is Not a Creature with Stirring, which is a Christmas colorway. And then this one is Harpsichord. And I think those will be What's really great together. It's like a kind of old-fashioned piano. It's a different type of string instrument. Get your elbows off there because you're shaking the camera. Thank you. Um, it has a little bit of a different sound. I'll, we can listen to some harpsichord music later so I can hear you. Or so you can hear what it sounds like. So I think those two will go really well together as well. And maybe that other one I'll save for the next design. Again, I don't know what the designs are going to be, so who knows if it will work out or not. Excuse me, Mom. Yes? Could you show off the cool rock? You can show it off while I'm getting... Okay. Everybody, this is a rock I found outside. Might just look like a regular rock when I do this. And it actually looks like a couple of mountains or something. But when I flip it over, look. The bottom is red. It's smooth. It's really weird. And I think there was once like a sapphire in here that broke up and got hardened into a fossil inside of the rock. Mm. A sapphire fossil. Mm. So I'm really lucky I have this. Okay, totally. back to my mother. Uh -huh. Alright, and then these two I also would like to do for Mina's latest sock pattern. And I don't remember what it is, but it's from the New York Sock Club. I can't recall what it's called, but it's with self-striping yarn, and it has eyelets. Well, you should probably use You Can Recall Caramel. You Can Recall Caramel? Is that yeah. a kind of candy to help me remember things? No, it's from Just Add Magic. Oh. If you eat it, you can remember everything. Well, I totally need that, because I forget stuff all the time. Yeah, you can remember everything. Okay, so this is Knit Picks Stroll in the Poppy colorway, and this is Knit Picks Felici in, I think, the Sunset sunset colorway. And I totally stole that from Meg from Bad with Girl Sits and Knits, too. So I really want to cast those on, but again, I've got all my stock needles taken up. Thanks for giving me your shell. You're welcome for giving me my shell. And then, oh, okay, can I finish showing this? And then I'll be all done. And the last, oh, you want me to show it? Okay. Megan wants me to show this shell, which I gave to her from my collection of shells when I was a kid. I had one of those lamps that's um, empty, and then you can fill it up with stuff, so I had shells inside. Like a unicorn horn. There you go. I dig it. Yeah. And okay. let me show them the inside. And the inside, it well, looks kind of like in it wax and rubber and stuff. Because Daddy put wax in it. Yeah. Hey, do you have any more shells? Mm. Well, where did I've you given you a bunch. Get out of the way. The what? Be. I've given you a whole bunch of them. I don't know where you put them. But I, I don't remember. You had a whole little bag of them. Well, I don't remember where I put them either. Mm. We'll have to look around. That's fine. And then this was a birthday present from my mom. It's the Berger de France uh, Gumi 50. Which is also my Grammy. Yep, which is also your Grammy. And I think this, which is left over from my honey pullover, it's a Venus slide trap, one rein yarn splits, would be great heels, toes, and cuffs for that. And it would help me use it up. I'm jumping, jumping up and down. So I want to cast those on also. Oh, and I need to go get something out of my backpack. It's also for you. Okay. It's a happy Mother's Day card. You're going to love it. Fun. And that is everything I have to share. Everything. Come on. Let's go. Let's go get your card. Come on. Okay. So I need to go because I have to go get my card. So have a great week, everybody. Thank you for joining hey, me. Mommy, thank you for watching. You. And we will see you next time. And, and thank you for letting me sharing. Right. If you're a mother, have a happy Mother's Day tomorrow. And if not, have a happy, great Sunday. All right. Bye, guys. Yeah, and have a happy, great day. Okay. Bye. Bye.